Well, good morning. Welcome to another Sunday morning together. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I am excited about what God is doing. I'm excited about what God is going to do in our time together today because I believe that God is going to speak into our hearts today. I believe that God wants to do something for us today that is going to encourage us and strengthen us. I believe that God wants to give us a glimpse into His power, into His glory. And I believe most of all that God wants to just remind us that he has the power to redeem every situation of life. As we begin this morning, I do want to take a moment to give you a couple of announcements. I um, want to remind you that because of everything that's going on, um, we will not be having any activities here at the church. I know that by now, uh, most of you know that, but I just felt like I need to make sure that I remind you. Um, I will tell you that this coming week, I will be conferencing with the church board and we will be talking about some options um, for things in the future. We're going to be talking about how much longer longer this might last. And uh, along with the church board and the guidance of our district superintendent, um, we're going to be making some decisions that will determine uh, what happens over the next two or three Sundays. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll give you some information about that in the coming days. Um, the second thing that I wanted to remind you of or let you know of, some of you have asked and inquired about some district events that are coming up. I believe there's a, a ladies day coming up in April. There's some primetime dinners happening happening in uh, the month of May. All of that has been canceled. All of that is, is not going to take place this year. Uh, so if you've been wondering, if you wanted to know how, how to plan, uh, you can know today that those things will not be happening. Um, the third thing that I do want to remind you of is um, we do have opportunities for you to continue to give your tithes and offering. Um, we know that um, you maybe want to know how to do that. So just three ways that you can do that. Uh, first of all, you can mail that in to us, and we want to say a special thank you to uh, those of you that have already taken advantage of that and done that for us. Um, you can schedule time to stop by and drop it off. We'd be happy to take it that way. And then the third option is you can go to our website, btownnaz.org, and go to the giving tab. Click on that giving tab, and that's going to take you directly to a link uh, that will take you to our online giving. And you can give a one-time gift there. You can set up reoccurring gifts. Um, you can pick the various things that you want to give to under the uh, a tab there. So uh, take advantage of that for us. Know that that's out there. Um, we just want to do whatever we can to help make your life just a little bit easier. Um, as we start today, uh, I want to share with you the words of the psalmist in Psalm 111. Uh, I've reflected over these words this weekend, and uh, I was encouraged by what the psalmist says. And, and I hope that as you hear them this morning, uh, it will bring you some encouragement as well. Hear these words today. It says, Praise the Lord. I will exalt the Lord with all my heart in the council of the upright in the, and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in Him. Glorious and majestic are His deeds, and His righteousness endures forever. He has caused His wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear Him. He remembers His covenant forever. He has shown His people the power of His works, giving them the land of other nations. The work of His hands are faithful and just. All, catch that now, all of His precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. He, pro he provided redemption for His people. He ordained His covenant forever. Holy and awesome is His name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow His precepts have good understanding. To Him belongs eternal praise. 
This morning, we have gathered to give God praise. And it may not be in the traditional sense. It may not be in the sense that we are used to. Um, but every time we gather together, whether it's in person or whether it's digitally or whether we find some other creative way to do it, every time we get together is an opportunity to give God praise and glory and credit. So I'm going to encourage you this morning throughout our time together, find a way to give God glory and praise. Find a way to say thanks God for everything that God has been doing in your life. I'm going to invite you to join me now. We're going to have a word of prayer and uh, then we're going to just continue on with our time of gathering this morning. But, but let's pray at this time. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of being able to call on your name. We thank you, Lord, that you hear us we thank you, Lord, that you are enthroned on our praises. We thank you, Lord, that you have been faithful through every generation. We thank you that you have been faithful through every season of life. We thank you that we can put our hope and our faith and trust in you and know that you are with us. God, I pray that you would guide these few moments that we spend together today. I pray that these words that will soon be spoken will encourage our hearts. And Lord, that they will give us reminder of your, of your power and your might. And Lord, that we might rest in the promises we find in your word. We love you this morning. We desire your help. I pray for every person who's listening, every living room they may be sitting in every home uh, that may be hearing these words today, would you encourage them, strengthen them, and Lord, may your presence be felt in a very real and powerful way. We ask all these things now in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we've got a special treat for you this morning. We have uh, pre-recorded a few things for you. And uh, the guys of the trio Forever Saved uh, are going to minister to us now through song. And following their song, um, we are going to go ahead and um, jump into the word and the message of the hour. Well, special thank you to uh, Forever Save for doing that for us. They came in before the stay-at-home edict was enacted, and they recorded some of these tracks for us. And you may see them again in the days to come. Uh, we're greatly, greatly appreciative of their willing to do that, willingness to do that for us. Um, this morning, we're going to conclude our series on the book of Ruth. I've wrestled with God all week about going here, and I uh, couldn't get away from it. And so I just feel like there's something in this message this morning um, that God wants us to take and apply to our life. So um, we're going to look at it, the final uh, section of, of Ruth, Ruth chapter 4, the final couple verses there. And uh, we're going to see what God wants to say for us today. Um, Charles Stanley um, once penned these words. He said, adversity is not simply a tool, it is the most effective tool for the advancement of, spiritual, of, of our spiritual lives. The circumstances and events that we see as setbacks are often the very things that launch us into intense spiritual growth. Once we begin to understand this and accept it as a spiritual fact of life, adversity becomes easier to bear. Uh, it's no secret today that our lives have been touched by adversity. It's no secret today that our lives have been inundated with, with all sorts of things that we are not used to facing. Things have happened that we weren't anticipating. We're going through things we never thought we'd go through. And we're facing the adversities of life. And in these moments, it can be very tempting. It'd be very um, likely to, to question and wonder what God is up to. It's very easy for us to sometimes to look at our circumstances and wonder how in the world God could ever bring anything good through what we're facing. I don't know about you, but I faced many times in my life when, when I looked at what was happening and I thought, there's no way God can do something with this. And yet time and time and time again, I've been amazed at all of the ways that God has perfectly come through in my life, and I know you have as well. Someone once said that conclusions are powerful things. Conclusions can, can leave you feeling satisfied and contented, or conclusions can leave you feeling frustrated and unhappy. 
A good conclusion can bring closure to your life. Good conclusions can, can leave you feeling satisfied with what has happened. On the other hand, a, a bad conclusion can leave you feel like there's still unfinished business. Um, anyone who has ever read a book or watched a movie or followed your telev favorite television show knows that there are times when those shows or those movies end and, and you're saying, wow, can it, it, it can't end like that. I don't like that ending. Give me something different. Conclusions are, are powerful things. A reasonable conclusion, a good conclusion, can help you to walk away feeling like everything is going to be okay. Good conclusions can empower us to leave the scene believing that everything's going to be all right. It's my hope today that when we get to the end of this book, the book of Ruth, that you will end this time uh, of worship saying, I believe that God is in it, and I believe that everything is going to be okay. You see, a careful study of the book of Ruth reveals to us that this book is filled with tragedy, uncertainty, difficulty, and adversity. The book of Ruth opens up with a reminder that there's severe famine in the land of Bethlehem. The famine is so severe that it, it prompts Emelech and, uh, to take his wife Naomi and his two sons and to travel to uh, an enemy territory known as Moab. And they set up their home in Moab as strangers and partners in this land. And while they're there, the two sons marry Moabite women. But, but that's not the end of the story because while they're there, we see that the husband dies. And then a little while later, both of the sons also die. And we wake up one day and we see that Naomi who, who left Bethlehem with her family is suddenly left with nothing. She, she's feeling hopeless. She's feeling like there's no future for her. She's feeling like everything is so uncertain. And yet in the midst of that, we're reminded that she had received word that God was working in Bethlehem. And so with no other options and, and just wondering that maybe, just maybe God can help me, she decides she's going to return to Bethlehem. Her two daughter-in-laws begin the journey with her, and at some point in that journey, she urges her daughter-in-laws to go back home. She says things to them like, hey, there's nothing I can do for you. There's nothing I can offer you. I have no sons to give you. Even if I had a son today, would you really wait for him to grow up and, and be of the age to marry? And Naomi is urging these daughter-in-laws of hers to go home, and we see that in time, one of them does go home, but we see that Ruth makes a commitment to remain with Naomi. Ruth says things like, hey, Naomi, wherever you go, I'm going to go. Wherever you make your home, I'm going to make my home. Who, where your God is, I will be. Your God will be my God. I, I'm going to be with you to the very end. And we see finally the two of them journey back to Bethlehem. As they enter Bethlehem, the townspeople are stirred with excitement. They, they, they're, they're excited to see that Naomi has come home. And, and yet we see that the, the pain of what has happened in her life, the adversity that she has faced is so heavy upon her that all she can say is, please don't call me Naomi. Just call me bitter. See, this book reminds us that that sometimes God leads us through difficult seasons. And yet I hope to help us understand this morning that when it's all said and done, when we reach the conclusion, we discover a God who was present and active in every situation that these people faced. When we last examined the book of, of Ruth, well, we left it at this scene. Boaz and Ruth have just finalized their engagement. Boaz and Ruth have just completed all the steps that were necessary to pave the way for their marriage. And the, the, the plans are now being made. The, the marriage ceremony is getting ready to be conducted. And today we're going to look at what happened. We're going to discover, is what Paul Harvey would say, we're going to discover the rest of the story. If you're following along today, if you have your Bibles in front of you this morning, I'm going to invite you to turn with me to Ruth chapter 4. We're going to look at verses 13 through 17 today. 
Ruth chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. Hear these words this morning. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And when he had made love to her, the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. The women said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord, who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. May he renew your life and sustain you for your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given him birth. Then Naomi took the child in her arms and cared for him. The women living there said, Naomi has a son. And they called him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. If I had to choose one sentence to sum up uh, this book, this chapter of the Bible, I would choose to sum it up with this sentence. God will redeem your brokenness. God will redeem your brokenness. You see, we need to understand this morning that the God that we serve, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Naomi, has the power to redeem the brokenness of our lives. Whatever you may be facing this morning, whatever you may be going through today, God can and re will redeem your situation. There is nothing that we are facing today. There is nothing that we are going through in this moment. There is nothing that we are going to face tomorrow, the next day or the day after that. There's nothing that we're going to go through in our future that God is not already present, that God will not meet us at, and that God will not redeem and use for His glory and for His power. The book of Romans tells us that we know all things work together for good to those that love the Lord who are called according to His purpose. You see, God is working everything together for His good. Now, I have to caution you, though. I have to caution you by reminding you of this. Sometimes uh, the fulfillment of God's promises in our life take time to unfold. Sometimes the blessings of obedience are not always immediately experienced. Sometimes it takes time for God to get us to where He wants to take us. Seasons of barrenness and pain will give way to blessing, but they often take time to get there. So I look at this story this morning. I see three things that I want to leave us with. The first thing that I want to remind you of today is this. God wants to redeem your circumstances. It's no secret today that many people are facing dire circumstances. The events of our world over the last three weeks have turned everything upside down. Our lives, which were once marked by stability and security, are suddenly experiencing turbulence. Our lives, which once seemed secure and certain, are now being marked by more questions than answers. Beyond the coronavirus, I'm telling you today, there are some who are experiencing heartache in their life. There are some who are experiencing loneliness. There are some who are dealing with frustrations and hurts and pains. There are families that are going through relational strains. There are families that are facing financial limitations. There are families that are unsure of their future. There are people who are suffering physically, emotionally, and even spiritually. There's all sorts of adversity and pain going on around us. And yet in the middle of it, I want to tell you today, I want to remind you today that God wants to redeem your circumstance. Like Naomi processing the loss of her sons and husband, you feel the hurt today. Like Naomi feeling the pressure of a strange and foreign land, you feel the pain today. Like Naomi entering the town of Bethlehem, feeling rejected by God, feeling lost in her plight, feeling like the Almighty has showered her with brokenness, you know the feeling of pain today. Perhaps you've awakened to circumstances beyond your control. Maybe today you feel like no one is listening to you. Maybe you feel like today you've lost all control and, and there's nothing in your life that you have control over anymore. 
Maybe you feel like everyone else is calling the shots and you're just along for the ride. I want you to know this morning that if the story in Naomi of Naomi and Ruth teaches us anything, it teaches us that God still has the power to redeem our circumstances. God can and will always reach into our brokenness. God will reach into our pain. God will reach into our hurts and He will bring healing and restoration and redemption to us. He will remove the uncertainties and pains we now feel and one day His power and His healing and His love and His grace will overflow in our lives in powerful ways. I want you to remember today that Naomi thought that God had forgotten about her. Naomi thought that, that God had turned her life bitter. Naomi thought that God was dealing with her harshly. And yet after a season of adversity, after the season of pain and trial ended, we see as the scene unfolds, as the story concludes, Naomi is now holding a grandson. She's looking into the eyes of a child who will be her hope for the future. She's looking into the, the eyes of a child who really are the fulfillment of a promise of, of a God that says, I will meet your every need. I will care for you every step of the way. She's holding her grandchild and she's seeing the promise of a God who is faithful. A God who offers peace and hope and security. A God who offers a secure future. I want to challenge you today. Hang on just a little bit longer. I know you're facing tough times. I know difficult days are before you, but let's not ever, ever, ever forget that God is able to redeem our circumstances. The second thing I want you to know today is that God has the power to redeem our families. I got to be honest with you this morning. This is a lesson that God is desperately, desperately trying to teach me. This is something that I'm in the middle of a season of learning that God is wanting to redeem broken homes and hurting homes. I got to confess to you also that I'm often a slow learner and I often wish that God would bring the, the healing and the, the answer and the solution a lot quicker than he sometimes does. But I can tell you today that there are things that are happening. There are things in our homes that, that God desperately wants to make right might be helpful to remember to look at this through the, the eyes of Ruth and Naomi. I, w I was thinking about the, the idea of God wanting to redeem our homes and I was reminded that, that Ruth left everything. Ruth left everything. Ruth left behind her, her mother and her father. She left behind the gods and, and the religions that she had grown up accustomed to. She left behind her homeland. She left behind everything that was familiar to her. She left behind her friends. She, she left behind the things that probably brought peace and contentment to her life. She traded it all for an unknown. She left it all behind to go with Naomi to a place where she had never been, to people that she had never met. And I've got to believe that there was at least one moment in Ruth's life that as she enters into to the town of Bethlehem, she must have wondered to herself, did I do the right thing? Then I think about Naomi who, who lost everything. She, she lost her husband. She lost her sons. She lost her livelihood. She had no family. She, she had nobody to go home to. She had no one to, to go and visit at the end of the day. She, she had no one to say goodnight to. She, she had lost it all. She was dealing with the pain of a broken home life. So bitter and hurt is she that when she enters Bethlehem, she, she doesn't even want her friends to call her by the name Naomi. In fact, when she enters Bethlehem, it looks as if her family name, the family name is, is going to die. It looks like there'll be no future for the family name. It looks like there'll be no hope of, uh, of a future. It, it means that it's just 
this, this family name, her bloodline, it, it's just going to kind of die out and be no more. And yet, we know that God was working. We know that God was working because the Scripture tells us that, that God blessed Ruth with a son. The years of a closed womb in Moab give way to a son who enters the world there in Bethlehem. And as that son comes forth, we're, we're witnessing the compassion of a God who has the ability to reach down into our broken homes and restore and heal and provide. It isn't always in an instant. It isn't always immediate. It isn't always as quick as we want. But God can redeem our homes. You see, we're, we're watching in this story that God is, is bringing redemption to Naomi's life. The one that had nothing, the one who had no one suddenly now has a son-in-law, a daughter-in-law, and even greater than that, a grandchild. wonder this morning, could it be today that among those who are tuning in, that there are marriage relationships that are struggling? I wonder if it could be today that among those who are listening in, if there aren't some parent-child relationships that are strained. I wonder today if it couldn't be that there are some homes that are torn right down the middle for one reason or another. I wonder today if there isn't a widow who's tuning in, who who's knows the feeling of hurt and loss. I wonder today if there isn't someone who knows the pain of a wayward son or daughter that's no longer serving the Lord. Can I tell you today, God has the power to reach down and restore our family situations. Even today, this very hour, God is working in your life. And, as, and just like He brings hope to, to these characters in our story, He's wanting to bring hope to your home today. The last thing that I'll leave you with today is simply this. God ultimately wants to redeem your future. The birth of a son to Ruth meant that Naomi now had a secure future. The fact that there was now a son in her life, a grandson in her life, meant that if something happened to Ruth or Boaz, Naomi would still be cared for in her advanced age. We see a beautiful scene unfold in the text that I read to you today. Today, Naomi takes this child in her arms and, and she holds him close to her chest and, and she cherishes him. She looks at him because as she looks at him, she's seeing the glory and the majesty and the power of God. As she looks into his eyes, she's seeing the very heart of God right there in her very arms. It's that image of, of a grandparent who, who looks into the eyes of their grandchild for the very first time and that overwhelming sense of love that sweeps over you this is what Naomi is experiencing this one who was once bitter and 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 really confused about life this one who want this one who once felt like that she had no hope and no future is suddenly seeing man God has been with me all the time her future seems much more secure now than it did just a few weeks ago. Her, her future seems a whole lot more secure now than it did just a few months ago or a year ago. You see, God had done the impossible in her life. He brought an heir into her life. He brought security into her life. He brought her hope for the future. God provided not only her immediate needs, but God was also providing her long-term future needs. Church, I, I wish I could tell you today. I, I wish I could look into the future and tell each and every one of you what the future holds. I, I wish I could give you these promises of, of things that were going to happen to you that would be so good and beautiful. But the fact of the matter is, I, I don't know what's going to happen in the next minute, much less the next hour, days, or weeks, or years. 
I don't know for sure what's in store for us, but the one thing that I do know is, is that God is still in control of the future. That God is still in control of everything that's happening in our lives. And He wants to use our circumstances to give us a better future. He wants to use our circumstances to remind us of His love and glory and power. He wants to use what's happening today to remind us that He can be trusted in the future. The story of the Bible from cover to cover is a story of a God who will go through great lengths, a story of a God who will stop at nothing to reveal to us our need for His redemption. Naomi had to go through dire circumstances to see it. She had to face some of the most challenging times to get there. But contrary to her belief, God had not abandoned her. God was with her. He was with her every step of the way. And He was using her adversity to bring something beautiful to her. I want to tell you today, part of redeeming your future, part of redeeming your future involves redeeming your eternity. You see, the beauty of the story of Ruth is that it affects not only what happens here, but it affects what our eternity might look like. The text tells us that Naomi held this baby in her arms and they named him Obed. And then we're told that Obed had a son who was named Jesse, and we're told that Jesse had a son who was named David. The Bible reveals to us that David would become known as a man after God's own heart. It would be through the line of David that Jesus would come into the world. In Luke chapter 2, as Luke is describing the birth of Christ, he says these words. He says, So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, to the town of David, because he belonged to the line of David. Jesus' entry into the world was made possible through the events that occurred in the book of Ruth. Because of Ruth's faithfulness, because of Ruth's obedience, because of Ruth's willingness to follow Naomi wherever she went, the pathway for Messiah was sent. Messiah comes into the world because Naomi and Ruth were faithful to do what God had called them to do. You see, it's through the person of Jesus Christ. It's through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ that each and every one of us finds redemption. It's through the death of Jesus on the cross and, and the resurrection of the dead that, that, that gives us the opportunity for life and forgiveness of sins. You see, just as Ruth and Naomi received a kinsman redeemer that, that changed the whole course of their life, for those who receive Jesus, our Redeemer, into our hearts and into our lives, He can change everything for us. It's Jesus who can take our brokenness. It's Jesus who can take our adversity. It's Jesus who can take the mess that we often make of our lives. It's Jesus who can take our pain, our hurt, and our sin. It's Jesus who can take the adversity that we face and turn it into something beautiful. You see, when you invite Jesus into your life, when you confess your sins to Him, He is faithful to forgive you. He redeems you. He turns your life around and He sets you on a new course of action. I want you to know today, I want you to know today 